السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته صباح الخير جنايدا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين Thank you very much, Mr. Wada Khanfar, and uh, our honorable speakers and guests. I was, I was not expected to be the second keynote speaker after the fiery speech given by Mr. Wada because I prepared my keynote not to touch on the emotion, but more, but, but more into what inside the mind. In his book, Richard Paul Evans. Unfortunately, he's from the West. <laughs> but we take the best from them and try to put away what is bad. In his book, A Step of Faith, he observed that what the culture we live in, we are swimming in an ocean of information and drowning in ignorance. This is the situation that we are living in now. This quote aptly points out the current state we are in in this social media world that we're living today. And it just remind me of the Malaysian philosopher, Said Hussein Alatas, who called this phenomena as Babalism. Babal in Malay refers to when society is comfortable at being ignorant. Therefore, Babalism in this context refers to the complacency an uncritical state of a developed and sophisticated society. They feel very complacent with the ignorance. They feel very complacent not thinking critically. They feel very complacent to accept everything, just like Mr. Wada said, from the West without filtering them. Our children, including you know, all the children, all my children in front of me now, are in greatest danger of this epidemic of ignorance. It's more dangerous than COVID. They are more susceptible to be swept in the current of information overload. If they are not trained to think, complacency may weigh down their minds and misdirect them to be comfortable with what they know without questioning, without critically, uh, critically looking into things without digging deeper into the abyss of data. Aristotle states that education is an ornament in prosperity and a refuge in adversity. Education is the panacea of this situation. Education is the answer to save our ummah, to save our youth, to save our children from this phenomena of verbalism. It is my conviction that education is hope for humanity. The uncertain future can be secured through the values that are certain in education. This is our children's door to prosperous lives and for their opportunity to make prosperous the lives of others. Education, more than the delivery of knowledge, should provide students should provide our children, should provide our youth, should provide our society with the adequate instruments build critical minds. Today's rapidly changing world demands us to reshape our learning system. In Muslim countries, we need to change the way we teach our children and the way we teach our society. Students today need to have a broader skills of knowledge that will enable them to succeed in an uncertain future. More importantly, we must humanize our education. The main goal of education is not just to obtain good degrees. The goal of education is just not to put yourself in the best colleges abroad. The main objective of education is not only to secure good jobs after you're graduating from universities, the main goal of our education is to humanize human being, a human with a soul, with mind, and compassionate towards humanity. And for that, in our Muslim community, 
we should focus in our education on communication, collaboration, creativity, critical thinking, and the most important part is values and ethics. Thus, we should embrace the four C's and one V, 21st century learning. Education is not an end itself. It is the process of facilitating learning. It is a process of the acquisition of knowledge, skills, values, beliefs, and habits. It is an effective vehicle in promoting peaceful living, rejecting violence, rejecting colonialism, rejecting dualism in looking into human society. Education should be a tool for us to say no and to put an end to war and conflict and colonization. Subsequently, safeguarding development sustainability. Malaysian laureate Zakba has remarked that we, the leaders of today, and you, the leaders of tomorrow, are responsible for moulding future individuals that are intellectually capable with virtuous characteristics. It's not only your qualification that matters, but also the values within you. This is our pivotal role today as Muslim youth and Muslim intellectuals, which is to concord the best possible remedy for intellectual ailments and to safeguard the values we hold dearly. As value-driven education system form the philosophical foundation of our agenda, our education system must be designed in resonance with a national and global call for a fair and equitable distribution of sources and economic development with humanistic and Islamic values. Our people are our resources and our youth, you are our future. These are change makers for whom we are tailoring our learning systems. As Muslims, we are responsible in shaping our resources and our future with the sets of values of Islamic and universal humanity that celebrates the diversity of truth, wisdom, justice, and compassionate. In my speeches, as the Minister of Education not long ago, I often speak of education for all. And it is a sort of a call to, a to action for all education stakeholders in our respective nations to help us to ensure that initiatives for access to quality, inclusive and equitable education is methodically implemented. We have a gargantuan task ahead, but I believe everything is possible if you are able to dream it. Today's dream is tomorrow's reality. As young Muslim leaders, I trust you too must be part of this jihad and Islam. We must start the effort within our circle of influence and our own society. As Confucius once said, the man who moves our mountain begins by carrying away small pebbles and small stones. Despite that, we too must realize that the responsibility to bring the best of our nations is not only and solely on us. Our change makers for education in our respect respected nations must come from all backgrounds, bringing their various life experience to the fore. With all the fast-paced change that is happening around us, the need for holistic development of individuals is rapidly taking center stage. The human civilization has been on an upward trajectory in almost all the indicators that measure progress. Young people's social, emotional, and cognitive development must be constantly looked into and nourished. Our schools and universities should be the place where our children learn not only to count, to read, and obtain good results, but first and foremost, to love knowledge and to mutually respecting each other. Where learning is fun and meaningful, where they learn the values of unity, 
of love, of happiness, and mutual respect. Today we are richer. We have access to better healthcare and life-changing technology that made everyday course easier and the list goes on. However, according to the World Health Organization, WHO, depression is the leading cause of disability worldwide, especially among our younger generation, amongst you guys, and is a major contributor to the overall global burden of disease with more than 300 million people of all ages suffer from depression. We have our psychologists here who will nourish us more with more information about the subject. The fourth industrial revolution resulting in disruption and uncertainty surrounding the future jobs, jobs market makes it critical to develop future-ready graduates. I believe this is a worrying fact for all of us. Therefore, we have to prepare a generation of graduates that are truly future-proof and can still thrive in the age of rapid changes that we're living in. It is said that challenges often carry the seeds of opportunities within them. So where is the opportunity here? The current disruption calls for radical rather than incremental approach. It is time to reimagine the education systems and rethink the role and approach of institutions of higher learning to creating value. This is an opportunity for universities to view their role beyond knowledge creation and dissemination as communities that develop resilient, emotionally intelligent, empathetic, connected, and happy graduates. The questions to be considered are, can traits such as resilience, emotional intelligence, and happiness be taught and developed, especially at schools and universities? Can their development be measured? And can all that be done at a large scale? I would like to suggest the answers to these three questions as yes, yes, and yes. The work we are exploring in this forum today is a case in point. We live in a world of accelerating change, volatility, and hyperconnectivity. In a world defined by change, no one can effort to build a life around repetition. Through education, we can encourage our youth to be a contributor rather than repetitor. An active player instill values and everyone must be given a chance to be a change maker. That is more, the most important part, to be an agent of change. And yet, all this only can be achieved when world recognize and work together to strengthen educational multilateralism. We must progressively move beyond looking at reforms in education within our national context per se. We must embrace the mind of Ummah, the Ummatic mindset. We must change our lenses to look at education as part and parcel of an ongoing global effort in educating and re-educating the young and old. Not only the young, but all must be re-educated as well to be aware of the ignorance or babal that can tear our societies asunder. It is only through this global approach would our educational blueprints, institutions, systems, and service providers be forces of positive change towards a peaceful and inclusive world. It is true that multilateralism can be impacted by conflicts like we are witnessing nowadays. Cooperation and inter inter interdependency can be challenged by loss of trust in the face of international or regional disputes, as we witness nowadays. Yet, I have faith that at the heart of our existence, our goals are aligned. As Muslim leaders, as Muslim youth leaders, we are all concerned for the future of our ummah. We also share similar values, despite of different ethnicities, different races, 
and different geographical boundaries we are coming from. We share similar values on the ethical use of information and the preservation of adab, akhlaq, and humanity. This is our struggle, to keep these goals visible and attainable. With that affirmation, I would like to end my speech with the words of Jean Piaget. Unfortunately, somebody from the West too. Sorry, Mr. Wadda. But something important to learn, the wisdom. Al-Hikmah Dhalatul Mu'min. As John Piaget said, the principal goal of education is to create men. I should include women who are capable of doing new things, not simply of repeating what other generations have done, men and women, who are creative, inventive, and discovers. The second goal of education is to form minds which can be critical, can verify and not accept everything they are offered. And this is where I think this forum is a platform to create a creative youth leaders that we, that we aspire to be the future of the Ummah. And with that, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Tushikur Redurim. Shukran.